the Privileges Committee that are investigating whether Boris Johnson lied to Parliament over Partygate have released their dossier and it's actually helping Boris as it exposes the Sue Gray stitch-up. Well, on the one hand, as you've seen on this channel the last couple of years, we have not been the biggest fan of Boris Johnson for very logical reasons based on policy rather than the personality clash or any of that nonsense that the Westminster bubble are obsessed with. Having said that, Boris Johnson and what's going on against him, the witch hunt, is actually backfiring on people who were orchestrating it. Whether it was Harriet Harman, who is the chair of the Privileges Committee, that is basically the committee to do impeachment. They want to impeach Boris, but they can't impeach him as president. But it's about getting rid of him as an MP to prevent a potential comeback in case he becomes party leader again. Anyway, they're obsessed with that. Sue Gray, who was the investigator on Partygate, has now got a new job as Keir Starmer's chief of staff. So this dossier that the committee have now released kind of exposed that weird relationship between Sue Gray, who's now a Labour person, and this so-called impartial and balanced committee. So, Boris himself has said, it is a bit surreal that the Privileges Committee have relied on Sue Gray on 26 occasions. It is particularly concerning to get the investigator <laughs> to use her. They worked together on 26 occasions, considering that the, the Privileges Committee, which is essentially investigating whether uh, Boris misled Parliament when he said, um, I thought that I was following the rules, uh, because his, his excuse was, he's not talking, we're not talking about all the parties, we're talking about the party, the gather, gathering that Boris Johnson received a fine for. For that one, his, his excuse was that, well, we were already in the same office, same work bubble, I didn't really realize this was not allowed, all that nonsense. Anyway, but now they're saying that instead of going to use the actual people, the witnesses, uh, to find out the truth, they kept using Sue Gray and her recommendations. So this is the, the dossier, the House of Commons Committee of Privileges, uh, which <laughs> matter referred on 21st of April 2022, summary of issues to be raised with Mr. Johnson. This is the fourth report, by the way, of the session. And this is again, Boris Johnson said this about as a reaction. I'm grateful to the committee for their work over the last 10 months. I believe that their labors have helped establish the obvious truth. It is clear from this report that I have not committed any contempt of parliament. It is also clear that what I have been saying about this matter from the beginning has been vindicated. That is because there is no evidence in the report that I knowingly or recklessly misled Parliament or that I failed to update Parliament in a timely manner. Nor is there any evidence in the report that I was aware that any event taking place in Number 10 or the Cabinet Office were in the breach of the rules or the guidance. Like any Prime Minister, I relied upon advice from officials. There is no evidence that I was at any stage advised by anyone, whether a civil servant or a political advisor, that an event would be against the rules or the guidance before it went ahead. There is no evidence that I was later advised that any such event was contrary uh, to requirements. So, when I told the House that the rules and guidance had been followed, that uh, that was my honest belief. Over the last year, uh, the committee has had access the colossal uh, quantity of testimony. They have had many months to analyze all this internal documentation, including countless emails and WhatsApps, which come from sources friendly to me or otherwise. If I had known about a matter of such importance and with such potential to undermine our national struggle against the virus as a breach of the rules or guidance in number 10, I would unquestionably have raised it with my close team. Basically, that's, that's, that's the main explanation. And it is fascinating because we don't really want to defend Boris. <laughs> Consider spend months uh, criticizing his governance and his policies. But we have to be objective. You know, we did say when the whole thing came out that, well, we Boris Johnson has kind of lost it and he probably needs to go at some point. This is a witch hunt. It was obvious there was a witch hunt from the media 
and the political left in parliament. And we thought, and as I said at the time, no matter how much we want Boris Johnson to go, this will create another slippery slope culture that if they can bring down someone like him, they could bring down any of us, if any of us get into power, basically, because you're going to create a bad precedent. This is the issue. And there's another thing that he said, which is quite interesting. He said, no such concerns were raised on either side, and all my statements to the House of Commons were based on that understanding and advice. I note that the committee has emphasized their wish to be fair. They have made reference uh, on a new, uh, fewer, on no fewer than 26 occasions to a personage they bashfully describe as the second permanent secretary to the cabinet office. He means Stu Gray. That is, of course, Stu Gray. So it is surreal to discover that the committee proposed, uh, proposes to rely on evidence called and orchestrated by Sue Gray, who has just been appointed Chief of Staff to the leader of the Labour Party. This is particularly concerning given that the committee says it is uh, proposing to rely on the findings in the second permanent secretary's report as relevant facts which the committee will take into account. I leave it to the others to decide how much confidence may now be placed in her inquiry and in the reports that she produced. Brilliant, right? It was fascinating because uh, she was forced on Boris Johnson herself uh, at the time and the people, all the other civil servants and officials who advised him saying, basically, Sugare is a good one. Uh, we're going to say you appointed her as the, 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 the investigator. They basically threw him under the bus way before the bus even arrived, which is absolutely fascinating how the dirty tactics work in uh, Westminster politics. But again, it's not really a healthy culture. It's important to talk about these things. It's important to uh, discuss even the repetitive stories that we've already covered all those months ago because it, it is a reminder to the public who we are dealing with, what sort of people we are dealing with. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. We've created a new playlist on the channel called Lockdown Files. This video and all the other videos, in case you haven't had the time uh, time to catch up, you could go on the playlist and watch all the Lockdown Files videos. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.